Lawrence Reese is an historian and filmmaker who has met Oscar Groening for a documentary he made, Lawrence. What was he like? He is exactly like what he was before the war, which was a bank clerk. So he's incredibly mild-mannered, um, perfectly nice person to meet. After the war, he became a personnel manager in a factory. So he is a completely ordinary person. And after the war, he never kept it a secret what he did. No, um, I think the German prosecutors knew, knew about him. We found him, uh, our researcher Frank Stucker found him by going into the archives of the prosecution, going through documents and tracing him that way. Uh, so there was no secret about what he'd done and he felt no fear in giving us this extensive interview that he would be prosecuted. In court today, as Catherine said in her, her piece there, he sought forgiveness. But do you think he really feels guilt for what he did? Is that the impression you got when you met him? He, it, he's an extraordinarily complex person in that he wanted to take part because he said he wanted to combat Holocaust denial, which he feels very strongly about. But nonetheless, he himself said, I don't feel guilty of any crime. So it's a very strange situation. And it's very interesting today, I think, that he said, he said, I accept moral guilt. So he's progressed that far. He accepts a form of moral guilt. But I'm still not sure that he thinks he's anything criminally wrong. But moral guilt because he knows that the Holocaust was wrong. I mean, he's obviously not denying the thing happened himself. No, absolutely not. Um, but he accept, at the time, he thought it was right. So I think, like a lot of perpetrators I've met, he, he almost separates himself into two, I think, so that he feels that at the time what it, it was right, but then that was a different person. Now, with what he knows since, he thinks it's wrong. So it's almost like there's a, there's a split. And also taken such a long time for the German authorities to change their mind on this. Yes, quite extraordinary. I mean, I, I feel passionately that what should have happened after the war is simply being... Uh, and a member of the SS at Auschwitz should have been sufficient to make you prima facie guilty of a crime. They took a very different view. They said, unless you were physically involved in the killing yourself, you weren't guilty of a crime. And in 2012, the law seems to have changed in Germany, and they decided in the wake of the Demaniak case, no, we can actually push forward with uh, uh, trying to convict someone like that for being an accessory. The fact that there were survivors there in the courtroom today is incredible given how few of them still around. Mm. But the perpetrators like Groening, is this going to be the last one or are there are more, are there more to Oh, try? I think there's a, there's, a, there's, there's a merest handful left alive. And the extraordinary statistic is that six and a half thousand members of the SS worked at Auschwitz. Many less than a hundred uh, will ever face any form of justice. So this is fascinating in itself, could be the last time. Yes, absolutely. Lawrence, thank you very much indeed.